Hello and welcome to a very unstructured episode of The Autistic Experience, your usual one-stop shop for neurodivergent news commentary, all sorts of other random bits and bobs, and of course, events. However, this week, none of those things. <laughs> it's just the all sorts of random bits and yeah, bobs. Yeah, it's just the all sorts of random bits and bobs. Today. <laughs> because, well, <sighs> the original plan was to do a regular episode today but then we got sidetracked and yeah. all of that went out of the window so or here down we are. the drain or you down say. the drain yeah which is probably more thematically appropriate we'll come back to that in a minute mm. <laughs> my name is kieran as always joined by chloe yes yes true correct indeed mm. i am here yes i am present present correct and on standby yes 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 sir New episodes come out on Sundays at midday British time, and you can go follow us on Instagram at The Autistic Experience. So, this whole thing, which has um, caused an entire week's podcast just to go, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Not today. We got a dishwasher. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did, but because we're not, you know, a large household, we got one of those fancy tabletop dishwashers. Now, if you don't know what the difference between a tabletop dishwasher and a regular dishwasher is, it's a bit smaller, about half the size of a regular dishwasher. And the idea is that you can put it on your kitchen countertops, you plug the water input of that into your sink tap, and then all the waste water just goes back down the sink. That was the theory. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> such is the way of things that uh, that did not happen, mm -hmm. did it? Um, because whilst I was very careful with paying attention to all sorts of different dimensions, I forgot to check the height in comparison to our countertop, which has shelves above it. Yes. So the dishwasher we got was about two or three centimeters too tall, so it wouldn't go under, like in between the countertop and the shelves, <laughs> and it was kind of too big to go anywhere else. So <laughs> it's it's one of these things where it's just one thing leads to another, which leads to another thing, which leads to another thing, which leads to another thing. Yeah. So, and this is why <laughs> we're quite tired. And there has been no time to prep anything. No. Because <laughs> I think we've spent the entire day today trying to get this dishwasher into the right place. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so, the backup plan for the dishwasher was to put it in one of the cupboards underneath the countertop, which did fit. The, the width was pretty much perfect. Uh, however, we needed to move one of the shelves in it a little bit. However, the shelves had little plugs in the side of the, the actual kind of cupboard mm. and the shelf would just lie on top of it, which is fine, except when you've got a really heavy dishwasher and you're trying to push it and it starts to come off those and tilt, which you don't want to happen. <laughs> so that's one thing to fix another thing to fix is that with the dishwasher in the cupboard door did not shut <laughs> yeah so one thing we had to do was take the cupboard door off which is fairly easy and but then <laughs> well we did all of that i say we you did all of that yesterday <laughs> and basically like you you ordered a few bits and bobs to connect it up to the water yeah. when you realized that we couldn't connect it to this the tap because it had to go in the cupboard you ordered all the bits in order to co connect it to the actual like pipe the tap yeah. pipe didn't you like all the adapters and splitting yeah bits so, and so basically and... underneath the sink you've got two water lines one is cold one is hot they attach to the different taps the plan was that I would just get a little splitter and I plug the cold water tap into the splitter. The splitter 
it goes off and also feeds the dishwasher and then we can also plug it into the tap so we get hmm. cold water through there easy Sounds right good no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because we were we were like oh everything's here now it's all sorted the shelf's in the right place the door's off so today as today, we're recording we'll friday we'll just Pop it in and connect it up, pop, and pop it'll it be in, grand. Get it down, bish bash bash. No, no, because for some reason, well, a the first problem was that we cannot turn the water off. Yeah, for, <laughs> for some reason, the the stopcock in the bathroom sort of turns the water off. Yeah, but not entirely. It turns the hot water off completely, but it turns the cold water off mostly, somewhat. <laughs> It turns it mostly off. Yeah, but there's still a dribble. And so when you're trying to work with the the cold water pipe under the sink, but the water won't stop, Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. Yeah, it, it's, it's kind of like you've got to bail out every so often. Yeah. So we end up with basically your job being hold the pipe. Yeah. So it drains into the, the washing up bowl and then occasionally <laughs> emptying it. But it just means that you can't really look at anything properly because you've constantly got to be aware of where the water's going. Yeah. You you don't have as much kind of manoeuvrability when you're trying to connect things because you've got to keep the pipe over a container to catch the water. And like, this pipe does not want to stay in the same place. No, because it's like a bendy plastic one in it. Yeah. So it's like... Try to spring back. I'll go, go wherever you know I want to go. So that was the first issue. But then you came across this problem where when when the plastic pipe is attached to the, the tap as normal, all is well. Mm -hmm. But when you put the plastic pipe into the splitter and attach it to the tap in exactly the same way... All is incredibly wet. Yeah, it just leaks backwards for some yeah. reason. <laughs> Which I still don't know why. No. After quite a lot of frustration, we yeah. just go, okay, we'll just put it back. And what we ended up doing was just basically replacing all of the sink connectors. <laughs> so we take all of the old stuff off, just go and get some new stuff for not that much. No, it wasn't that It was about bad, £10, pounds, yeah. really. And also we found a thing we could plug into the pipe to stop the water yeah, going. Yeah, that was the best thing when the water just finally stopped, just stopped. I was like, oh my God, the relief. <laughs> and then, so throughout the day, we'd already had various times where the water had escaped into the cupboard. Yeah. So it had leaked backwards down the pipe and ended up all over the bottom of the cupboard, or it had just kind of gotten, like there was a time where you'd plugged it all in and then you couldn't get the pipe back out again, so you were like basically fighting with this pipe and connector while it was while it was still leaking yeah. all over the place yeah. like and also when everything was all wet, you can't get a good grip yeah, on it yeah, so like it was, there was a lot of, there was a lot of water leakage basically, yeah and so when you finally got everything connected this evening and we were like, it's not leaking, it's, it's not connected, leaking. it's not leaking. And it was like, right, you go and turn the water back on. I'm going to stand next to this pipe and stare at it to make sure that nothing explodes. <laughs> and it was horrible. Yeah. But we turned it on and it didn't leak, didn't explode. Uh -huh. We set the dishwasher up, it still hadn't exploded. Mm -hmm. You turn the dishwasher on, and as of yet, it is still running. And as far it's still... as I know, it hasn't exploded. Yeah, we haven't checked on it since we started recording, but it hadn't exploded when I came in just before we recorded. So, mm. so far, it's running quite nicely, and even using the tap while it's running it does not cause problems. Yeah. So, fingers crossed, it should be it should be done now. Yeah. <laughs> but. But yeah, that, it was a lot. I'm just grateful that I don't have to wash dishes anymore, though. I'm so excited <laughs> to not have to do the washing up. And like when it's when the food is all stubborn and you know you've got like sauce that sticks to like cutlery and bowls and things, and like, I just oh, I'm not gonna have to wash it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I 
hear you asking. All right, that is all very well and good. You've managed to do some reasonably basic plumbing. <laughs> what does this have to do with autism? Well, good question. And let me just think of the answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, there is quite a few things that happened, though, in this situation that I think would you could attribute to autism. Well, I, I think the general I'm going to do it myself attitude... Yeah plays quite heavily into it because, you know, we don't tend to like asking for help. Yeah. Because asking for help means having to try and explain to someone what you aren't doing. That's a, that's a whole thing by itself. Yeah. And then, you know, you've got to let someone in to kind of do it for you. And, like, I like learning how to do things. Yeah. It's like solving the problem, isn't it? Because yeah. I felt... I felt like I wanted to solve it as well, and I wanted to just mess with it until it made sense. Yeah, it was like that kind of drive to figure it out yeah. and solve the Sol issue, solve the problem up to the point of ruining our own <laughs> brains. Yeah, to get it done, and then you can't take a break from it either, can you? Because no. you've just got to kind of keep going until it's done, no matter how frustrating it is. It's like I can't leave this. No, our, our, we we get like so invested, and our brains just go all in, yeah, on the problem. Because like yesterday, because it it arrived yesterday, like I started just unpacking it and seeing how it would all fit together, and you know whether it would. That's when I discovered it didn't fit on the countertop. Mm -hmm. But finding out that it fitted in the cupboard, and I was like, oh great, yeah, and all that. And then I then I looked at my <laughs> my. I watch and I was like, oh, wait, I need to leave for work 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> work, bro. <laughs> and, then, and then I came back and there was stuff everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> like I had to literally run that, out yeah. of the door. But it's like you started off with the intention to just have a quick look. <laughs> yeah, I, gra <laughs> I grabbed my keys, I grabbed my water bottle, I grabbed my wallet and then I left. <laughs> all the tools and everything all yeah, over the everything place. Everything was just yeah. on the floor. <laughs> I was like, like chaos. I, 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 I was thinking, I hope I get home before Chloe does because then I've got a chance of tidying some of this up. <laughs> well, I got home and I was like, maybe I could help with a bit of this and I just kind of looked at it all and went no, I don't know no, what I he's doing <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it <laughs> but yeah I mean there's that there's probably the need for it in the first place because I absolutely hate washing up when you've got like bits of food hanging around and I don't like it when things aren't clean properly and I don't really like washing stuff when we've kind of been handling higher risk foods because I'm really like paranoid about cleaning it properly and I don't like washing in dirty water and there's just like so many things about it and sometimes if there's a lot of washing up or if it's particularly messy like if we've cooked something saucy or greasy and then you I kind of look at it and I just go I can't like I can't physically deal with it and then it builds up, like if I don't do the washing up on one evening, for example, yeah. after we've cooked, the next evening it'll build up and I'll be like getting overwhelmed then because the kitchen feels really messy and feels really like claustrophobic and I hate it. Yeah. And then it very quickly turns into a bit of a kind of sensory issue then when I'm walking into the kitchen and I get stressed because there's stuff on the worktop. Yeah. So there's stuff that needs washing and I'm like, I don't want to do it, there's too much. And then the draining board is already full of clean washing up from before that we just haven't yeah, put, away we yet. put that away yet. Yeah, and I'm looking at that going, oh my God, there's more stuff and that's got to be done before I can wash up because that's in the way and it just, it just gets too much to deal with. But having a nice dishwasher means that you can just put everything in it after you've done cooking and just leave it to go. Mm -hmm. And and it all stays in there until you take it out. So you can't even see it. <laughs> <laughs> so all the clutter is non existent. It's somewhere else. Yeah. And then when you when we want anything like bowls and plates to eat, we could just get back out the dishwasher. <laughs> you don't even have just to tidy them up. Out the dishwasher. Yeah. Use them to eat, put, put them back. back in. Yeah. <laughs> just store all our cutlery in the dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely a few things about it that 
something linked to our autistic minds. I would still recommend because even having put it on tonight, now it's working. I'm, I mean, I haven't seen how the dishes have come out yet because it's not done, but I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so yeah, happy that just, that's washing it instead of me. <laughs> yeah, that, that we can just put it in there and then just press a button and then leave. It, it'll be done. It'll be washed and dried and just hanging out ready to use. And oh. Yeah, because I, I, I think that speaks a bit more to the ADHD side of our brains. That, you know, there's all sorts of hurdles in the way of actually doing stuff. Yeah. And having these things to make life a bit easier so that we don't actually have to do the washing up. You know, it's all there, you know, like on the side. And we're like, oh, that's a massive pile. I've yeah. got to fill up the sink. I've got to empty the draining board. I've got to you physically wash them and blah, 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 blah. Now we can just go, okay, stick it in the machine. That'll do it. Yeah, exactly. If we're doing stories about this week's events, and I feel like it's probably only fair to quickly share this little one. So on Thursday, we rearranged the housing setup so that our two little girls could live next door to our boy. We're talking guinea pigs here, by the way. And say hi to each other through the bars, but, you know, not give us any more babies. Mm. Um, and we've got these kind of grid panels. They're called CNC panels, but um, they're like metal kind of grid bars. And, like, the square holes on them are, are fairly, like, they're fairly big. They're small enough so that an adult guinea pig can't get through. Yeah. But in in the past, we've had babies manage to get through the holes. Yeah. So before we tried our setup, we wanted to check that no babies were going to be able to get out of the holes now, that they were too big. Oh. So I got the smallest one. I tried to get her through one of the holes. I tried to get her to go through one of the holes. She wouldn't go. Um. And we were like, okay, yeah, we're both happy. She's the smallest. She She's not going through it. She doesn't look like she'd be able to. We're happy to go ahead with this setup. So I built it. You went out to work. I put them all in their respective houses. I was filling up food and things and just tidying up the floor after getting hay everywhere and, you know, getting their re reorganising all their food and stuff to make it tidy. And I looked up to check on everybody. And what do I see other than one of our little skinny females just just hanging out on the outside of the cage? She's just sitting outside the bars, just minding her business. And obviously I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Um, I put her back in and then I tried this system where I pulled like their kind of bedding material, the kind of fabric that they're on top of. I pulled it up and around the edges just to create like a little barrier that went all the way around the outside. And I thought maybe this will be enough to hold him in. No, no. She immediately went through again. And this time she thought it was really good fun to start running up and down the edges of the entire pen inside like this tunnel of fabric so she was just messing about I, every time i put her back in she'd go straight back out again she found her route she knew where she was going <laughs> i couldn't stop her so eventually i blocked her off and then the boy on the other side started getting through and running around all around the outside so i was like oh great he can get out as well then so they can all he's escape. the biggest one yeah he is and the fact that he can still get out I was like oh gosh so it was very funny, but I was in the house on my own, running around, trying to come up with a solution to keep these three baby guinea pigs inside their pen, <laughs> whilst they were all breaking out of said pen. <laughs> and I was just in the house by myself, <laughs> trying to figure this out very quickly, <laughs> so that none of them ended up just, just running off and going on a little jolly around the flat. Again, I hear you asking, Chloe, that's all very well and good, but what does this have to do with autism? And I think that we can tie that to being able to think in or being able to solve problems 
in quite stressful circumstances. And well, you, the thing is, usually the way we come up with solutions, they tend to be the more efficient ways of doing things or the better ways of doing things. Yeah. Because we, you know, well, I mean, I anyway, tend to try and think things through as much as possible. I think that's probably one of the biggest differences in how our minds work from each other, though, is that you do think everything through. And I'd say most of the time, the things that you come up with as a solution work. And when things don't work, it's not usually anything to do with your plan and it's the thing itself being yeah. a bit stupid for no reason. But the way I approach things is there is a situation, I see a solution. You do that And that solution. is the solution that I go for. And that is the only possible solution that there can ever be. <laughs> well, you managed to come up with two things for the... Yeah, but I only came up with the second thing because the first one didn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the first one, well, well, if the first one worked, I wouldn't have needed to come up with the second one, would I? But yeah, usually I'm, I make things more difficult for myself quite often by thinking that way because I will see an answer that may be a bit more complicated, a bit more of a faff than another option, but that that is the answer now. Yeah. It's the only answer. <laughs> yeah, I I think well, I mean as I've kind of demonstrated today, like the solutions that I come up with will be technically very efficient and very effective. It's just that sometimes I I think they end up needing more steps or more things to do. So if I go, "Oh, we'll just put the dishwasher in the cupboard." There's going to be a lot more steps to this, yeah. I'm afraid. And like my the solution that I thought of when you sent me the video of <laughs> the skinny just happily sat outside <laughs> the bars was just okay. So if I go to B and Q and I can get some like cheap floorboards, then we can just kind of put those around the outside so they can't get through that. But then of course we end up because I've only just thought about it is that. You know, other than just leaning the floorboards up against the side of the panels, we'd need to kind of connect them somehow. Mm. And <laughs> my my brain, like when I thought about it just now, went Morton's and tenon joints. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the easy solution. <laughs> anyway, I think that's probably a good. Uh, spot to call this episode. We haven't really discussed anything of import apart from the fact that we can be pretty good in coming up with problem solving problems. No, solutions, that's the word. That's it. We can be pretty good with coming up solutions in pressurized situations. And also, you're a plumber now. Oh, yeah. It's a me. <laughs> Let's <-a> go. <laughs> Please don't sue me, Nintendo. <laughs> but it's always worth remembering that your mileage may vary. Is that a good on your solutions? Or um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, a moral to the episode. Um, I think it's always important to remember that, like striving to achieve perfection in your solutions, is a bit of a black hole. So you're never really going to be properly satisfied with the most elegant of solutions because you're always going to be trying to figure out a better way of doing it. That's just how your brain is going to work. So I think just be mindful of that. Was that in any way wise? I think so. I had one as well if you want oh, to hear yeah, my go one. For it. I was going to say that thinking along the lines of us when when we're going to visit family like there's often there's often more than one route to your destination <laughs> oh what the the lesson of don't go through birmingham <laughs> yes so whatever solution you're trying to find to your problem don't go to birmingham yeah. <laughs> that is all <laughs> um, i mean it's a very good life lesson <laughs> i can't see there are many people who would disagree with that no, I wouldn't, but yeah, like there's not just one way to get there and there may be a route that's very quick and very direct, 
There may be a route that's slightly longer and a bit slower, but a bit safer maybe. But you still get to the same place. So whichever road you go on, don't punish yourself if you get there a little bit slower than somebody else does. All right, that's probably enough analogies. Let's, uh, let's, let's call it for this week. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Autistic Experience. As always, you can go follow us on Instagram at The Autistic Experience. I'm not quite sure what we'll put up. Probably just a, a graphic for the episode. A picture of the dishwasher. A picture of the dishwasher. <laughs> yeah, with all the clean things, hopefully. <laughs> but we should, fingers crossed, have a, a new episode for you next Sunday at midday British time. My name is Kieran. She's been Chloe. You go wash those dishes. So then you can use those clean dishes to go get that free lunch. Hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs>